we don't ascribe him to have like the same, you know, like godly attributes, or we don't associate him with Allah. You know what I mean? It's the same way. Well, you. actually, the Quran and Sunnah do associate him with Allah. Yeah, chapter four, verse eighty. It says, "If you obey the messenger, you've indeed obeyed Allah." Right? You know what? Can you just give me two seconds? I can. Uh, yeah, open up. Open up. Surah Nisa, chapter four, verse eight. Hey, yeah, let's go. I'll just go and log, in, log into my MacBook. So. Do it. Get it. Because you're saying we don't. Yes, you do. There are many verses in your Quran and in your Sunnah where Muhammad is associated with Allah. Uh, he who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. But those who turn away, we have not sent you over them as a god. Did. Okay, so here it says, obeying Muhammad, because here the messenger you believe is Muhammad, is to yeah. obey Allah. That's an association. It associates yeah. obedience with Muhammad as being mm -hmm. obedient to Allah. Now, there's a few more before you comment. I just want to give you a few more, then you can try to ex explain it. Go to chapter 33, verse 36. It is not for a believing man or woman when Allah and his messenger decree a matter. To have any other choice in that matter. Indeed, whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, so that's, uh, has clearly gone faster. Okay, so why does it say what Allah has decreed? Why does it say Allah Wah, and the messenger have decreed? Why did Allah include, associate your prophet with him in his decree? Because you said we don't associate Muhammad with Allah. The Quran does it all the time. Now, again, before you answer, I'll let you answer, but I got to give you two more verses. Go to chapter four of the Quran again, Surah Anisa, chapter four. Read 64 for me and 65. But first read 64 and slow down. And then we'll read 64. Yep. We only send messengers to be obeyed by Allah's will. If only those hypocrites came to you, O Prophet, after wrong, wronging themselves, seeking Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger uh, prayed to their forgiveness, they would have certainly found Allah ever accepting of repentance most merciful. Notice the condition. They had to come to your Prophet Muhammad and yep. he would pray for them and they would ask for forgiveness and then they would find Allah merciful, right? There's a condition. Reread it again so you don't think I'm making it up. The condition is they had yep. to come to your Prophet Muhammad and then he would pray for them and then they would ask after they come yep. to Muhammad and he prays and intercedes, then they would ask and then Allah would be found to be merciful and forgiven. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. So, so what's the condition? Yeah, so, yeah, so um, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has to... Um, Pray for their forgiveness and then Allah but they have to go forgive. to him yeah. they have to go to him and then he has to yeah. pray for them right yeah no, but he could so, argue, notice, like, sorry. so you notice the forgiveness of sin yeah. is connected with going to muhammad and having muhammad intercede and pray for your forgiveness but yeah. this is more clear in 65 read verse 65 the next verse 465 but no by your lord they will never be true believers until they accept you or profit as the judge in their disputes and find no resistance within themselves Against your decision and submit wholeheartedly. So submit uh, to whose decisions wholeheartedly? Submit with perfect submission? To who? Okay, so you until they accept. completely, yes, okay. wholeheartedly submit, perfectly yeah. submit, internally, within yourself, yeah. and externally to who? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so I thought you Muslims tell us that Islam is submission to Allah, but here yeah. your own Quran says, true submission, true Islam, is completely, wholeheartedly submitting to all of Muhammad's decisions mm -hmm. without having any tension within yourself regarding that. So let me just sum up what we read and then I wanted you to explain what okay. you just said earlier. Your Quran says obedience to Muhammad is to obey Allah. Allah and Muhammad decree and what Muhammad with his God decree, you have no say so in the matter. You must go to Muhammad for Muhammad to pray for you in order for Allah to forgive you. And you must completely, perfectly submit to Muhammad and all that he decides for you and have no inner tension towards any of his decisions, and that's true Islam. And you're telling me that you don't associate Muhammad with Allah? Yeah, because like, it could be like, you know, just a reassurance in it. Make sure, you know, you're like checking with your prophet and then, you know, seek forgiveness in Allah. I, I yeah, don't but see you why said it's... earlier, we don't yeah. associate Muhammad with Allah, but now you admit you do. So which is it? No, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, uh, you know Muhammad's associated with Allah, you know what I mean? Okay, well, let, let's break it down logically. Yeah. If obeying Muhammad is obeying Allah, that means... Yeah. Muhammad's obedience is being associated with Allah's obedience. Ah, I see your point. I see your point. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what do you mean now? Yes, you do. You do associate Muhammad with, in fact, to be a true Muslim, can you simply say, Ashadu, I bear witness, testify, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, and that's it? <laughs> you can like a, a kind of argue this back and forth, you know. No, but can you though? Sunni Islam? No, no, no. Technically, no. Why no. can't you? What must you do? To be accepted as a Muslim, can you simply say, I bear witness, there's no God but Allah, full stop? No, you have to say Muhammad is a messenger as well. So Notice what you did. You again associated Muhammad with Allah yeah. in order to be a true Muslim because yeah, you but... can't be a true Muslim without saying there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Yeah. And if you're not a Muslim, you're not saved, right? 
Yeah, but it's the same thing with Moses, Isaiah, all these other prophets. Can you show me in the Quran where it says that at the time of Moses, it said that the people had to say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is uh, Moses is his messenger? No, but Moses is a prophet in Islam. So if you reject him, you're not a Muslim. But that's not the question. Can you show me where the Quran says that the followers of Moses were commanded to say, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Moses is his messenger? In other words, if Islam is yeah. consistent and they all taught Islam, yeah. Can you show me the shahada that mm -hmm. Allah told Musa to enjoin on people where they had to say, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu yeah. Musa Rasulallah. I bear witness, okay. there's no God Allah, and I bear witness that Moses is his messenger. Can you show me that? Yeah, but no, I can't show you that. I can answer. Okay, but so you can't show me, but then you said that this yeah. was true of all the messengers, but no messenger, even in your Quran, made it incumbent that the followers had to bear witness there's no God but Allah and that that particular messenger is the messenger of Allah. None of them thought that. Yeah, but like the thing is, a way you gotta, a way, like what say, sorry, is that, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like he was the only prophet sent to the Ishmaelites in it. But then like, you know, the previous nations, like, you know, Israel, basically, they had thousands of prophets sent to them. So it wasn't, you know, like the criteria, like it wasn't the same, you know what I mean? Because they only had one prophet. So you're you're giving an explanation that the Quran doesn't give. How do you know that's the answer? Where'd you get that from? Well, that just seems like uh, logical in my mind. You know. But see, since you're not God and you're not a prophet, you're not a messenger, yeah. what seems logical to you doesn't mean it's true or logical. So I'm not so much interested in your explanation as I am your no, proof. For example, uh, sorry, um, if I could just say, it's like, for example, um, you know, your daughter, and like you've got kids in there, I think, you know, are you, you know, it's like, for example, um, your, your daughter saying, I am the, I am the daughter of Sam Shamu. You know what I mean? You know, like you got like you to associate your name with it. So then why using your logic, your argument, why then did the prophets not say, you who follow me, Moses, you must bear witness yeah. I'm Allah's messenger. Otherwise, you're not true Muslims because you believe they're all Muslims. They taught Islam, right? Are you saying that about Moses? Sorry. Because you said that the reason why you bear witness that Muhammad is a messenger is because everyone had to bear witness and testify. And that messenger sent to them, which culminates yeah. Mo Muhammad. So we're back to square one. Why didn't the prophets and messengers before Muhammad yeah. also impose the shahada the way your prophet did by saying, hey, you must bear witness. There is no God but Allah and Moses is his messenger. Because you do have Deuteronomy 6.4, hear O Israel, the yeah. Lord, our God, the Lord is one. So you have that part, but you don't have the second part. And Moses is the messenger of your Lord. Yeah, because they had many prophets into the nation. Like that Jesus doesn't mean was... anything. That it, well, it's irrelevant. It no, because they had to believe in all the prophets sent to them, right? Yeah, but they had like many prophets sent to them. That's Did they have to believe in every single prophet that came in their time? In my understanding, no, because you, had, you have Christianity, then you have Judaism. We're not answering the question because you're going to bury yourself with your response because that means yeah, if Isaiah yeah. came, then the Shahada would have been, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness, Isaiah is his prophet and messenger. You're not answering the question because that means if you're right, any messenger that shows up, then the shahada would change in only one element. That when you then bear witness in the messenger, the identity of the messenger would change, but the shahada basically would be the same, that you must bear witness, there is no God but the true God and that particular messenger. So I'm still waiting for you to show me a prophet or messenger saying, now that I've come, you must say, there is no God but Allah, and I, whether Moses or Joshua or Isaiah, am his messenger. You still didn't answer the question for me. You're trying to come up with your reasoning, and it's faulty. Yeah. Well, dude, I'm so sorry. You know that last week cut out. <laughs> I'm really sorry, man. I got a really bad um, internet. As well, the point is, your re reasoning is faulty because if okay. the shahada that Muhammad enjoined on you is consistent with Islam historically, I don't care if you have 10,000 prophets. You don't need to confess the names of every single prophet. You only need to confess that you believe in that particular prophet sent to you at that time because in acknowledging him, you're acknowledging all the rest. Isn't that what you believe? That when you say you bear witness, there is no God but Allah and bear witness yeah. Muhammad is his messenger. By yeah. saying you believe in Muhammad, you're also testifying you believe in all who came before him because Muhammad yeah. confirmed all those who came before him, right? Yeah, I believe that. Okay, so then why don't you find any of the yeah. true prophets? And I'm going to even use your Quran. Let's go with your Quran. Where in your Quran, when a prophet showed up and he says, this is Shahada, there is no God but Allah, and I am his messenger, and you must confess this. I uh, couldn't show you a verse now. I couldn't, okay. I couldn't show you. So notice once again that you end up with Muhammad being associated with your God because you mm -hmm. cannot be a true Muslim, according to Sunni Islam, 
If yeah. you don't say, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. And yet when you go to the true prophets and messengers, they yeah. were not told that their followers were required to then testify verbally that they bear witness in that particular messenger being from God. So why did your prophet do that? Why did my prophet... Um, why did he do that? Why did he make it necessary that in... Because I'm going by the hadith. In Sunni yeah. Islam, you yeah. must say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad yeah. is his messenger. And you believe that's your prophet, right? He taught you that? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah he told so me. why did he do something the prophets before him did not do? Look, I think it was just a different situation. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, anyway, so... So far, we've shown, shown you that you do associate yeah. Muhammad with Allah because you must submit to his decisions perfectly. You must obey him because obedience to him is obedience to Allah. So you are associating obedience with Muhammad with Allah. And you I must confess agree. to the shahada to be a true Muslim. Uh, well, I don't fully agree, but I think maybe you know, okay, well, I can listen to you. Okay, I'm going to be a Muslim. There is no God but Allah. That's it. But I'm not going to confess Muhammad. Will Allah accept me? Oh, uh, well... Well, it's not written for me, but I'm going to end up in hell for you. No, well, as far as the Quran and I mean, Sunnah, I mean, sorry, I meant Allah to. Sorry, I meant to. I'm back. It's not written for me, but I'm going to end up in hell or hell. Uh, yeah, hell forget hell. about what's written for you. I'm going by the Quran and Sunnah. Will Allah accept me if I just say there is no God but Allah? Full stop. I don't want to say and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah knows best. <laughs> no, if Allah knows best and your prophet yeah. revealed what Allah knows best according to the Sunnah, no, he won't. Allah will judge everybody accordingly. But I, I, I have, I have, according to your own sunnah, the hadith, anyone yeah. who's heard of your messenger and rejects him, yeah, his punishment will be double, right? Yeah, but don't you guys say, say the same thing in Christianity? Sure, I don't deny Jesus is God. Do you believe Muhammad is God? Because now you're making no. an equivalence between my belief in Jesus and Muhammad. I believe Jesus is God. So are you admitting yeah. that Muhammad is your God too? No, but my point is that, like, you okay, believe but, that I, you believe I, for example, that I'm not going to end up in a... Yeah, if you reject Jesus, of course, but that's not my point. You're attacking straw man. Point? My point is, you're saying you don't agree with me that you do associate mm -hmm. Muhammad with Allah, and this is idolatry to some extent, but then to show you you're inconsistent, can I say there is no God but Allah and be accepted by Allah and in Sunni Islam? You know the answer, no. no I can't. won't okay. be. So here, you, whether you see it or not, this is yeah. an admission that if Islam is the only religion before Allah, and he won't accept any other religion, yeah. and in order for me to earn Allah's favor, so I don't enter the nar, the fire, but Jannah, I mm -hmm. must embrace Islam. But to embrace Islam, I must say, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness, Muhammad is his messenger. That mm -hmm. means Muhammad becomes necessary and important for my salvation. Because if yeah. I don't confess Muhammad's messengership with my yeah. confession in the unity of Allah, I can't be a Muslim and therefore I can't be saved. So Muhammad is necessary for me to be saved. Yes, he is necessary. Say it again. He is necessary. So he is necessary for him to be saved. Yes. So you just admit Muhammad is your savior and you made him a partner no. and with Allah. Mari ikut Yesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar. Tuhan berkati.